Stromboli is not happy with the tangled mess, but then the crowd reacts very positively and then that confuses the conscience, because he thinks, well look, this is horrible, this guy's a tyrant like Pinocchio's making a fool of himself, everything turns into a tangled mess but the crowd goes crazy and, well, being a fool, that can be entertaining, right? so it's hard to tell when the, a crowd, especially at a spectacle, because that's, this crowd is at a spectacle you just don't know exactly why it is that they're responding positively, but you've definitely given them what you want and you can see this look on Stromboli's face, it's like this false, again, this false kindness and generosity public facing, and, oh well, anyways, the, the conscience is very confused and I really think this is an important thing, because I've often thought, I spent a lot of time thinking about Hitler and I was thinking, well, how do you get into a state like that, you know? and you think, well, he's a dictator and he led his people down a bad path, it's like, that's not right, that is not what happened they had a conspiracy together and went down a bad path, now, think about it this way if one person thinks of something about you, it's like, whatever, right? but if five people tell you that, well what? then, then to, stop, to start not taking that seriously is kind of narcissistic, right? and if it isn't five, let's say it's fifteen people tell you the same thing or act the same way towards you, it's like probably you should clue in, well, what if you're a politician <clears throat> and you're trying out a bunch of different ideas and uh, you're good at interacting with the crowd, you're charismatic, you watch the crowd but you're not necessarily all that articulate, you don't have your values all straight now, but you're kind of angry too and maybe that's because you spent a bunch of time in World, one in, War one, World War I in the trenches, which was like no joke, and all your friends got blown up you, and then you were unemployed, and then you tried to be an artist and that didn't work out even though you were moderately talented and then maybe the economy fell apart completely on you hyperinflation, and then maybe there was a communist menace coming in from the east, and there genuinely was, and so you're not the world's happiest clam at that point, and you're talking to people who aren't that happy either, because they were also badly defeated in World War I, and then they had a terrible treaty they had to sign, and they lost part of their territory, and so the crowd's not happy and neither are you, and there's reason for it, and so you start talking to them, you don't know what you're upset about and neither does the crowd, so you start to articulate some things about why you might be upset and some of them fall flat, but you're paying attention to the crowd so you stop saying those things and some of the things make the crowd really wake up and listen and so you start saying more of those things, right? it's, un it's, it's an unconscious dialectic between you and the crowd, it's mediated by consciousness but it's not like you're sitting there saying, although you might be, I'm going to tell this crowd more what it wants to hear it's more sophisticated than that, and so you do that a thousand times, and you do that to ever increasing crowds and the crowd really starts to go mad, and they basically tell you that you're the savior of the nation it's like at what, how many bloody people have to tell you that before you start to believe it? you know, I would say with a typical person, a hundred will do it, that'll, that'll get you going man if a hundred people tell you specifically why you're special you're going to be thinking, even if you're kind of humble to begin with, you're going to be thinking, geez, there's got to be something to this, man but if it's a million people and they're roaring their approval, well, and then when it's a whole nation, it's like, good luck withstanding that there's just not a chance, how are you going to withstand that? now, you could be like Gandhi, and you could have taken that into account beforehand, because he did he read Tolstoy, by the way, he was a student of Tolstoy, and that's it's very interesting, because Tolstoy was the person who developed the techniques of nonviolence that Gandhi used and Tolstoy was also a deeply religious writer, <clears throat> apart from his novels, um, which are not, I wouldn't say, really in the religious category, although they're profound um, <clears throat> Tolstoy stressed humility with nonviolence, he really stressed it, and that's what Gandhi took to heart, so he lived a very, 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 very simple, bare-bones, ascetic life and that was to kind of see if he could keep his damn ego tamped down while the groundswell was building behind him, you know, and he dressed really simply, and he didn't own much, and he ate very simply, and he just tried to stay away from the whole materialistic success element that would be an element of what would turn him into an actor and also inflate his ego, and you know, he seemed to do that pretty well, you know, he certainly, well, he led a non-violent revolution that resulted in the, in the 
independence of India it also produced a terrible civil war and the separate separation of the Muslim Indians from the Hindu Indians and, but I don't think you can precisely lay that at the feet of Gandhi right but but what I'm saying is that you have to be an extraordinary person you have to be extraordinarily wise and you have to take ridiculous precautions if you're going to put yourself in the public sphere like that and expose yourself to that kind of adulation without becoming a puppet of the crowd and that's what happened to Hitler I mean, it's not like he wasn't also a conscious manipulator and surrounded himself by people who were propagandists and all of that so there was a conscious element but you got to think these things through and see how that dialectic develops like he learned how to appeal to the darkest fantasies of the crowd he was really really good at it and that was a dialectic process right the crowd told him what they wanted to hear and it's the crowds a mob at that point so I don't have to take responsibility for the fact that I'm screaming my approval when I'm surrounded by a million people so I can scream my approval for whatever I want forever whatever dark revengeful fantasy might be playing out in my imagination because I'm not going to be held accountable for it. 